So thankfully, Donald Trump didn't end up bombing Iran. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that he'll be taking his foot off the gas anytime soon with regard to escalating, because he's still escalating. On top of the sanctions that we're already imposing on Iran, he announced new sanctions. On top of that, he warned Iran that the United States would exercise limited restraint in the face of any further Iranian quote-unquote aggression. So the situation is still terrifying and he keeps ramping up, but in an interview with Chuck Todd on Meet the Press, he talked a little bit about what it would take for him to finally de-escalate and be a leader. Ramp things down rather than continuously fan the flames. And as you're going to see towards the end of this video, this whole story with Trump and Iran, it just comes full circle. And you'll understand what I mean by that. But basically, this is his message that he wants to send to Iran. It's all about nuclear weapons. I stop escalating as long as you promise to not build a nuke. You can't have nuclear weapons. And other than that, we can sit down and make a deal. But you cannot have no other conditions weapons. other than that cannot have nuclear weapons and they would have had them with President Obama. He gave them $150 billion. What is your deal? This? I understand, but, but what but is your deal going to gonna look like with them? Let me explain something. Number one, you have to look at the sites. Some of the most important sites we weren't even allowed to look at or inspect, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, the term was not long enough. Okay. There's like a short number of years left. After a very small number of years, he's talking about a country, after a very small number of years, they have a free pass to nuclear weapons. You can't do that. So to him, this is all about them getting nuclear weapons. He wants to stop that. That's what he cares about the most. Now, it's ironic coming from the guy who unilaterally withdrew from the Iran deal. Even when our European allies warned him to not do that, he did it anyway. And now he's saying, well, you know, I really want them to not get a nuke. Didn't you kind of shoot yourself in the foot in that regard, Donald Trump? And he says here that under the deal negotiated with President Obama, the JCPOA, otherwise known as the Iran nuclear deal, they would have been able to get a nuke. But I don't know if you noticed, but he directly contradicted himself in that same clip. He says the term was not long enough when it comes to an issue he had with the JCPOA. It's like a short number of years left. After a very small number of years, they have a free pass to nuclear weapons. So he's speaking out of both sides of his mouth simultaneously. On one hand, Obama's deal that he negotiated would have made it easier for Iran to get a nuke. However, another issue that he has with the Iran deal is that, you know, once the term is over, once it expires, then what? Then they could just get a nuclear weapon? But he didn't realize that by saying that, he was contradicting himself because he's tacitly admitting, yes, the Obama uh, nuclear deal was effective. It just wasn't long enough for my liking, but it's also not effective. So he wants to have it both ways. He claims once it expired, you know, they'd have a free pass to get nuclear weapons. But while the deal was active, they still have a free pass to get nuclear weapons. Well, which is it? Which is it? He doesn't know. Do you think that he even made it past the first page of the Iran deal? All he had to do was get to page two, and he would have known that it clearly states Iran will not pursue the development of a nuclear weapon. He doesn't read, though, so he didn't even get that far. He couldn't read past, you know, the first page of the JCPOA. Now, he keeps saying, or at least heavily suggesting here in this clip that, you know, they're not complying with the nuclear deal. And that's part of the reason why he had to pull out. You know, the terms were so weak, according to him, that Iran just wasn't in compliance. Now, to his credit, Chuck Todd actually challenges him on this and says, well, look, isn't it kind of weird that the United States is the only country that is insisting that Iran wasn't in compliance? Look at what he says here and how hypocritical his statement is. Don't you think, though, does it at all tell, what does it tell you that the Iranians haven't violated the agreement yet? That they are trying hard not to violate well, the agreement? Well, you see, I think they have violated the agreement because I think in the areas that we're not allowed to inspect, they're doing things. And I think they have been for years. Europeans don't think they're violating well, the agreement. Well, I don't care about the Europeans. The Europeans are going out and making a lot of money. The Europeans are fine, but they're going out and making a lot of money. So the reason why we can't really take the word of our European allies is because there's this conflict of interest. They profit off of the sanctions being lifted on Iran because then they get to do trade with Iran and that's beneficial to them economically. Uh, you know what he's describing here? It sounds like what he's doing when it comes to Saudi Arabia. He does the same thing. He refuses 
to stop selling them weapons, even if he knows they're using those weapons to bomb school buses, even if he knows that Saudi Arabia is a rogue regime that literally just killed a journalist, Jamal Khashoggi, and Donald Trump, he doesn't care about that. But if our European allies are going to benefit from the sanctions being lifted on a bad faith actor, according to him, that's bad. But when we do it, it's okay. Take their money, Todd. Take their money. That's Donald Trump. That's what he's saying. But regardless of what the United States or Europe says, the fact remains that the International Atomic Energy Agency confirmed just this last year that Iran was still compliant even after the United States pulled out. So he's a liar. Tensions are high not because Iran was not in compliance. Tensions are high because of you, Donald Trump, because you pulled out and reimposed sanctions. You violated the Iran deal. So the question is, what even is his end game here? What does he want? If he doesn't want Iran to have nuclear weapons, but at the same time, he's not willing to have the Iran deal. What is his end game here? Well, his end game is to have some sort of nuclear deal with Iran. We have great relationships with Europe. I don't mind Europe getting in the middle. Europe wants to make a deal, too. Europe would love to see a deal be made. These going to be separate way, deals? Europe, do, you wanna, do you want to do a separate deal with Iran, or do you want to get everybody involved in the same deal? Get uh, the Russians, I, get the Chinese. I don't, I don't care which, what kind of a deal. It can be separate, or it can be total. But it's one-on-one -on -one talks you all and the it Ayatollah? Is, all is it one-on-one -on -one talks you and the Ayatollah, or are you and the president? It doesn't matter to me. You know, here's what I want. Anything that gets you to the result, they cannot have a nuclear weapon. It's not about the straits. You know, a lot of people covered okay. it incorrectly. They never mentioned they cannot have a nuclear weapon. They'd use it. So allow me to translate that for you. Really, Todd, what I care about as president is I want to stop Iran from getting a nuke. So what I'd like to do, ideally, I'd like to negotiate some sort of deal with them where, you know, we agree to lift the sanctions if they agree that they're not going to pursue, you know, a nuclear weapon. Sort of like the Obama JCPOA that he negotiated, except with his name on it crossed off and my name put on that. That's basically what he's saying. What a moron. This is how it's come full circle. He withdrew from the Iran deal, escalates tensions because he's worried that, you know, they're going to want to pursue a nuke and he wants to get back into the same type of deal. He doesn't know what he's doing. The only reason why he withdrew from the Iran deal is because Obama did it. That's what he made clear. That is what he made crystal clear. And he also says they can't have a nuclear weapon because they'd use it. No, they wouldn't. They want a nuclear weapon if we accept that they want that as a deterrent to stop you from invading them, which you have made very clear that you want to do that. Except in this next clip, he's going to have a message to Iran and he's going to insist, look, I don't want war. But if we did have war, I'd fucking wipe you out. That's basically what he says. I'm not looking for war. And if there is, it'll be obliteration like you've never seen before. But I'm not looking to do that. But you can't have a nuclear weapon. You want to talk good, otherwise you can have a bad economy no for the next three years. N not as far as I'm concerned, no preconditions. And you'll talk anyway? Here it is, look. You can't have nuclear weapons. And if you want to talk about it, good. Otherwise, you can live in a shattered economy for a long time to come. Listen, Iran. I want peace with you. There's nothing I want more than peace. However, if we do have to go to war, I'm going to wipe you off the face of the fucking planet. But I don't want that, though. Do you see how everything has come full circle now? I mean, he pulled out of the Iran deal and he's escalating with them as a means of putting pressure on them to get them to come to the table to sign on to a nuclear deal. I mean, it's like this is a comedy movie that we're witnessing play out in reality. Where we have fucking Mr. Bean as the president. And he's just walking into doors, walking into glass, falling down. This is like a slapstick comedy. I don't know what else to say. It's all come full circle. He pulls out of the Iran deal, but now he wants an Iran deal. Maybe you shouldn't have pulled out from the get-go, dipshit. Maybe you should have, like, 
ask them if they can cross out Obama's name so you can write your name in, if that's truly what you wanted, so you can take credit for it. <sighs> dumb, dumb motherfucker. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher.